Hi. In this video, we will look at the organizations feature in mWater and Solstice, and how you can use that to manage users, deployments, and data at scale. And by scale, I mean anything from a single office to a district or region, up to a whole country, or even internationally across regions and countries. So there's really no strict limit to how large your organization structure in a motor or solstice can grow. So what are organizations? In a nutshell, they are hierarchies of branches in a motor or solstice where every branch has its own user groups and deployments. Here's an example that we will look at in a bit more detail soon. And what are the benefits of organizations? Well, three key things. You can manage users and user permissions effectively at scale. You can manage survey deployments across your areas of work and see them all together. And you can see what's going on with users and surveys in one place. How many users do you have? What are they doing? Are your surveys active or not? Is data coming in? What amount of data is coming in? And so on. All that is to say that if you intend to use mWater or Solstice for more than one, two or a small amount of surveys, it's a really good idea to set up an organization early on and learn how to use it. So let's go do just that. You can find organizations here in the portal under Manage Organizations. There you will see a list of all of the organizations that you have permissions to. You can read some guidance or you can create a new organization. Let's take a look at a few example organizations. Here is one big data collection enterprise that slices across three countries. So you can see that the hierarchy of the organization is split between three countries and then under those countries there are various groupings as relevant to the work at hand. There's another organization structure, Watson, which splits groups by theme. It really is up to you to decide how you structure your organization in the system, depending on how you work. Now, let's look at a custom organization, a demonstration organization, in a bit more detail. I click into one, and here we have our basic demo NGO. So, if I have the right permissions, I can click into a branch. I'm now clicking into the top branch, and I can see there's a number of tabs, and these are available in each branch. I want to cover two key things. What are the teams that are available in organization branches and how do deployments work? Teams are what really enable you to manage users at scale. The basic idea is that you add and remove users to teams and then you put those teams into the permissions options of surveys, of deployments, of visualizations and so on. And then you don't have to manage individual users in all those places. So let's imagine you have a survey, five surveys, and you have a user that you want to be part of all of those. Great. If you add that user individually to all five surveys, and then the user leaves your organization, you have to remember to go through all those five surveys. But now with teams and organizations, you can just add the whole branch to the survey or deployment or whatever and then you can just remove that user from the team and thereby the whole organization if they leave or add a new one to that relevant team and then they automatically get the permissions everywhere that they should. So let's take a quick look more deeply at the permissions. There are four different types of teams. We have admins you should only have a few admins. They're very powerful user permissions that allow one to add or remove branches, create or remove teams, and assign users to teams. Very importantly, note that anybody who is set as an administrator at the head office will also automatically be admin of all branches below. Managers are automatically added to the manager role when a deployment is made from this branch. 
managers of the head office similarly are managers of all branches and viewers are automatically added to the viewer role when a deployment is made from this branch once we make a deployment as we'll see anybody who is part of this group this team will then be added automatically you don't have to worry about it separately and finally we have teams which are a special kind of group that you can use in a versatile way for example for enumerators for data approvers and so on if I show you an example from this organization you can see there's a management team there's an approver team and here below we see there are various sets of enumerators so you can have one group of enumerators for a certain area and another group for another area so these are very versatile things these teams you can use these other tabs to see some activity in your organization what permissions your users have and bring on board collaborators from other organizations but I want to focus on deployments the second key benefit from using organizations so let's look at our program B in the water and sanitation unit we have an administrator we see that the top level administrator from the headquarters is also one there's a viewer and there's a team of enumerators let's see if there are any deployments the deployments tab shows you all the deployments that have been done through this branch in one place so I would really recommend you use this so we see that there are two active deployments very nice now very importantly you see that the enumerators of this deployment is the whole team it's not an individual user it's the whole team similarly for viewers and managers so let's say that there's work going on here in the education unit if I'm an admin of the org I just add a branch create a new program in this example and with this program I can then add some users to the enumerator team and create a deployment Let's create our enumerator team. And here, oh, pardon me. We add a few relevant enumerators now let's create that deployment I go to the deployments tab I deploy a new survey I get a list of the surveys that are available to me and I go through the deployment process with a few tiny changes compared to the other place where you can make survey deployments which is directly in the survey so let's say I've got this survey I will add it to the team this enumerator team that I just created and you can see that the viewers of this branch automatically become viewers of this deployment so that they can see the data coming in and the managers of this branch automatically become managers of this deployment I don't want any approval stages for this one and that's all I needed to do and now I have a deployment where this enumerator team that we just defined are the enumerators and we have the viewers and managers set as well so now both these two user accounts will be enumerators for this deployment and they will see this survey show up on their device and now as I mentioned earlier if a new person joins the organization we can add them to this team and imagine you have 10 deployments all with this branch they automatically get added to those 10 branches so your workload in managing permissions managing users and managing deployments is made much easier as you can see you can add branches you can even move them around from the settings tab and keep building and growing and changing your organization as is most relevant those are the key benefits and the basics around organizations in the video link there's a link to a guide with a bit more detail on organizations and here are the ways that you can stay in touch with us you can follow us on Facebook 
Twitter, LinkedIn, or you can email us directly at info at mwater.co or info at solstice.world to get in touch, talk to us, learn more, ask questions, and so on. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.